area. We are in front of a steel plant that has been in operation for almost 150 years, powering the American Industrial Revolution, powering America through World War II and becoming an integral part of the economy. But this plant and about two dozen other plants would be sold to a Japanese company if U.S. Steel gets its way in a multi-billion dollar deal. Nippon Steel plans to buy U.S. Steel in that more than $14 billion purchase. And since talks of selling U.S. Steel were first made public in August, shareholders have certainly seen a boost. But the steel workers are outraged. We talked with members of the Steel Workers Union who worry about their jobs and their future under a foreign company. Watch here. Well, before we get to the steel workers and before we hear what they have to say, again, let me say this. The union itself and its union members historically, historically have all endorsed candidates that align similarly with the same, the same governing principles that got jobs to lead the United States of America in the first place. Let me say that again. These same workers, let me share my screen with you, for example. Uh, the United States Steel Workers of America is the workers that actually, or the, or the union that represent um, the U.S. Steel that's being sold over to Nippon Steel, which is a Japanese company, right? And what they've done throughout, the, throughout their history, and this is, for example, the 2020 presidential election, uh, the U.S. United States Steel Workers, uh, or the United Steel Workers, embraced Biden, and they specifically had a whole thing on their website that says Vice President Biden has been a long friend of workers in our union, and they're proud to stand with him as he seeks to put out, uh, put our country first. This is their website. Vice President Biden has long been a friend of workers in our union. The USW is proud to stand with him as he seeks to put our country back on a path towards shared prosperity through responsible leadership. Now, let me remind y'all of something because this is the Millionaire Morning Show and I'm always gonna share with you how it comes back to the money before we go back to the article, all right? I wanna remind you of something. I don't know if you remember, but Trump was the one, and this is just the honest to God truth. This has nothing to do with whether or not I like him. This has nothing to do with who I endorse for president. But I'm going to just be honest with you. Trump was the one that basically endorsed the steel industry, and he worked his entire presidency from 2016 over to 2020. And he worked his entire presidency in order to fight foreign companies, mainly Asian companies, including China, by putting tariffs on China, which included their products and steel specifically. And then he went over and he renegotiated with Mexico and Canada, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which riled people up. But what it did was it boosted prices, it saved the steel industry here in America, and it continued to create a thriving economy, which was one of the reasons why we continued to maintain jobs and we didn't have jobs continue to be siphoned off over into other countries. What you even see as far as jobs and manufacturing coming back to the United States of America today is largely based on the principles and the foundation and the negotiations that came along with his presidency from 2016 through 2020. This is a fact. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. And so what happened was they created a trade war because they said that it was too far on the other side and foreign entities being able to participate in what's going on over here in America versus how we have to participate when it comes to investing in foreign entities on their soil was too disproportionate. It was too disproportionate. And so what we did was we started a trade war or tariffs that was then being levied against their products, including steel, because it was too much foreign steel that was being dumped on American soil in order to support what was being built over here in the United States of America. And so what it did was it, is, it, it incentivized companies here to buy steel from here instead of buying it from foreign companies that was dumping it cheap over here in America in order to take over more market share. And they still endorse Biden. They still endorse them. They still endorse them. 
That's a fact. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. They still endorse them. How do I know so much about the steel industry? Well, I still have some really, really good friends over in the steel industry because I used to work there. And I have some really good friends even over at Local 600 right down the street over in Dearborn, Michigan, where we're also represented, well, where we're, I'm still thinking I'm a part of Local 600. They are also represented by the same union and the same local that is right there at, at, at uh, the Dearborn assembly plant that assembles the Ford F-150. They assemble, assemble more F-150s than anywhere in the world right there along with over in Kentucky. And so when I was calling him and I was talking to him and I was saying, hey, what's going on with there? Are y'all experiencing some growth and a boom? Well, they said, Anton, we can't stop working. They said, we can work more hours than we ever have before. We work more hours than we ever have before and we are thriving and we are pumping. And this was all throughout his presidency specifically. Yet, the United States steel workers and local 600 and the UAW all stand behind the very thing that's killing their jobs. If you don't even know, right, because you really need to go and do your history. They all endorsed Clinton, right? They, they endorsed a lot of these Democratic presidents that was happening and it was popping way back in the 90s. And these are the presidents that actually opened up trade for foreign companies to actually invade into America when we come to our prosperity and when it comes to our jobs. We was able to ship jobs overseas instead of continuing to manufacture over here because it was cheaper in order to import. And then that's when you start to see, you know, jobs continuing to be uh, thrown away when it came to manufacturing in the United States of America. That happened under the Clinton's administration. That's a fact. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. So now, when they stood with him, they stood with him against the very person that was fighting against them with the limited tools that they have. They stood with him, and so now we sit here and look at them complaining about the possibility of a foreign company buying them up. But guess who's going to benefit? The shareholders. Whoever it is that owns stock in U.S. Steel are the ones that are going to benefit as a result of it. That's a fact. 